Hey, well, hello everybody, my name's Paul and this is Tony and we are two entire, entirely amateurish DIYers with two motorboats. One is a Fairline Phantom 43 which is the one you can see behind us and the other one is a Fairline Phantom 46 and both boats are about 20 years old and really their teak decks were getting very very tired so we've decided to replace them. Now I did mine about three months ago and we'll show you the results which has given us the confidence and hopefully you guys the confidence to replace yours. You will save a huge amount of money by doing it yourself and indeed the scary YouTube videos that you may have already looked at really are not quite but almost a nonsense as it is actually quite easy to do provided you have the right tools. So we'll go ahead and show you the detail of it and hopefully you can do a professional job. So here is the problem we're talking about. Some worn six millimeter teak face ply on the Phantom 46 which really cannot be made cosmetically better and has to be completely removed. And as they say in true Blue Peter tradition this is one that I did earlier. This was replaced about three months ago using a kit from Watson's and it is actually better than the original as it's solid six millimeter teak rather than the teak veneer on plywood. Preparation is essential, partly mental and partly actual. The tricky bits sometimes can be a little unexpected. On the Phantom 43 there was a non-standard deck fitting which are the dinghy tie downs which were particularly difficult to access. They had nuts and bolts going right through the teak deck and the GRP underneath it and access to the starboard side was very difficult. However it wasn't impossible but I made it a little easier by removing the starboard water tank which I had to do anyway as I needed to replace the aging heating system. Other than that the remainder of the fittings were very easy indeed to remove. Here are the fittings removed from the Phantom 46 and the holes have been taped over to keep any rain out. Marking the position of the hinges relative to the GRP is helpful when the new teak deck is fitted so that the holes can be drilled accurately. Fortunately most of the fittings are oversized and so if the fitting isn't exactly in the right position for the screw holes the holes can be drilled slightly oversized to locate the original hole. It is best to start off using the hatches as a beginning as you will rapidly gain experience how to use the tools safely and effectively. Also this can be done on the bench rather than on your hands and knees. Okay so here we are in the garage ready to show you exactly how to remove this old teak ply decking. The first tool that you will need to use is a good quality planer, an electric planer where you can adjust the depth of cut. We cut it at about one millimeter at a time which takes up to six passes therefore to get right down to the layer that you need to get at. The second tool that you will need is an electric chisel, 
please note that the blade on the chisel is very narrow and you need to keep this sharp. It is very tempting to use a wide bladed chisel but this will not work and it will get jammed very quickly. The third tool that we use is this belt sander. Use used sandpaper because otherwise you will cut through significantly into the gel. You can use a random orbital sander but it takes longer. This works brilliantly getting the remaining glue off and keying in the surface of the GRP for the epoxy glue that we will use. Needless to say there are smaller hand tools that you will use which you should have lying around in your garage or workshop but the specialist tools I have shown you can either be bought which is expensive or hired. The time it takes to do this job is relatively short and therefore hiring them wouldn't be too outrageously expensive. Health and safety is obviously an issue and eye protection and especially ear protection is very important as the electric plane and indeed chisel are very noisy. So we're making progress. When your confidence increases with the planer, you can actually take more than one mil off at a time and set the machine for two mils. But don't do this when you're close to the glue level as you may then start going into the fiberglass. Here we are, in fact, just about at the level where the fiberglass and glue is. This little area here hasn't been well glued down so it just peels off virtually all by itself. Here we are, we're about 30 minutes now after the start and we're, you can see now we're at the last sort of layer of plywood. Some of the plywood is lifted off the glue which obviously didn't adhere particularly well. There's one or two areas where the electric plane has gone through into the GRP but that isn't an issue as of course you'll be putting epoxy over this and it'll be entirely waterproof and strong. When you get to this layer basically you're ready then to use the electric chisel so we'll get on clear the rest of the plywood off and then show you how to use the chisel. As you can see some glue areas are exposed already but we need to get the remaining plywood off the glue. This requires the use of the electric chisel which might be seen to be a slow process but actually doesn't take too long. The key is to get in the layer between the wood and the glue. Don't worry if you nick the gel coat as this will be filled with the epoxy glue used to stick down the new deck.
the glue now is all exposed. There are little bits of wood left on, but this isn't a problem as the belt sander will easily remove this. When using the electric chisel, remember to use it with the bevel side down to get into the right layer, and don't be tempted to cheat and have two layers of ply because otherwise the electric chisel will just get jammed. The electric sander is now ready for use. We are using used 60 grit paper which is fairly blunt and therefore not so aggressive. It will easily remove the remaining glue which is important as we don't know whether the old glue will actually adhere to new epoxy or indeed chemically react so it is important to get it off. Expose clean keyed in gel ready for the new epoxy. So, pretty much done. The whole process from the beginning of taking the teak off until this stage has been about an hour and 45 minutes, which is not really too bad. There are still very small areas of glue left on there, but these can be left as the bulk of the exposed gel is available for the epoxy. We're back in the garage and the teak kit has arrived and we are ready to begin to attach this to the prepared gel coat surfaces. The materials you're going to need to do this job are epoxy resin, the base and the actual activator, acetone and caulk. The other thing that's needed is a notched trowel which in this case is four millimetres. Wipe down the surface of the GRP with acetone and also the underneath of the teak kit as this is fibreglass and the epoxy will bond much better to acetone cleaned surfaces. Follow the mixing instructions for your particular epoxy, but in this case it's done by volume, equal volumes of the base, equal volumes of the hardener, mixed together and spread on the fibreglass. Okay, so we've got a bit of epoxy just put on the uh, fibreglass, so we're now just spreading it out with, in this case, a 4mm notch trowel. If you go right to the edges, then you'll end up with the epoxy coming out where you don't want it. But that isn't a real problem because you can always scrape it off, obviously before it goes off, with a screwdriver and then clean up with some acetone. Ready to offer up the new deck, on it goes. It'll just float on the surface of the epoxy and then line it up with the sides so it's about square. And then you'll need to clamp it down. Clamped up, 
some epoxy has oozed out from underneath the new teak deck. This is easily removed with just either a flat-ended screwdriver or a scraper. Don't worry about getting finger marks of epoxy on the new teak, this will easily sand off. Clean up any residual epoxy from the GRP with acetone on a piece of kitchen towel. Clean up the tools after use, keep them surgically clean, ready for the next piece of deck to go down. First panel is done, next process is to drill the holes for the hinges and the bigger panel is now clamped up and ready to cure. Note the heavy weight in the middle of this <laughs> due to the bowing of the GRP rather than the teak. Improvise where you can. <laughs> The tick deck is now glued to the hatch. We now need to drill some holes. This is a top tip. Drill from underneath, but only use the borer just to pierce the teak. And then turn over the hatch cover and drill from the correct side. Okay, the pilot's made. We now have the drilling through from the top side so we don't get any chafing. So the principles of drilling the big hole are just the same as the smaller holes. Drill from the underneath, just get the pilot bit through the teak and then turn the deck over and complete the hole from the good side. So here's a pilot hole through and then we offer up the hole borer, put the pilot drill bit into the hole ready to drill the main hole. One nice clean hole with no damage to the teak ready to put the fitting in. The process is exactly the same on the main deck. Slightly more awkward but in fact this has only taken to get to this stage about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Remarkably fast all the awkward bits in the corners that the electric plane cannot get at, use the chisel but delaminate the ply so to speak bit by bit so that you can get to the correct layer. It's a bit time consuming but can be done very accurately indeed. Same process as with the hatches, the electric chisel is fairly easily taking off the old plywood deck. Ready now for the sanding phase. It's taken about four hours to get the remaining deck teak off. So all in all, in total, I guess the whole process getting the old plywood teak deck off is about seven hours or so. Putting the decks down on the hatches it just takes a little bit longer and the pieces that you glue on are bigger and slightly more awkward. Once the deck is laid onto the epoxy it's worthwhile putting some weights on and just taping down some of the edges just to make sure that it sets firmly onto the epoxy without any air spaces between the teak and the epoxy. Ready for the last piece of teak. Job done. 
There we are. Deck down, weighted, and waiting now for the epoxy to cure. Caulking is the next step. Tape up prior to caulking. This makes it much easier to clean up at the end. Tape up both sides of the caulking seam. Although you can sand caulk off, it's much easier to do it this way. A little time consuming putting the tape on. Run the caulk into the groove between the two pieces of tape. Don't worry about getting the excess caulk on the tape. Obviously this will come off when you peel the tape off. When the weather is warm the caulk goes off relatively quickly, skins over, so probably best to do a section and then smooth it off. Smooth the caulking off with either a wet finger or a wet gloved finger preferably, which will give a nice finish. Try not to go over it more than once as it tends to ruffle up. So caulking done, tape removed immediately after the caulking, putting on the deck fittings now. Job is nearly finished. The deck is now finished with all the fittings now on. The fittings that go through the hatches do have some bolts, but the fittings that go onto the main deck are self-tappers and therefore this job was done without having to access underneath the deck, unlike the deck on the Phantom 43, which had those specific dinghy fittings. The total cost of the project is around about £2,000 and the time that it took to do the whole job was approximately 20 hours, working not terribly hard. We hope this video does help you do your own deck and save some money.